back to the Daisy Red Rider and it's time for the second mod which is I'm hopefully going to make a, a brand new stock for it so the first thing we're going to have to do is take the original stock off of the gun now that's a fairly simple operation <clears throat> there is a long bolt here which goes through to the other side and it's got a nut on it and then in the top here we have a long wood screw which will take that out well, it is a long screw this one definitely All right so that's the that's the top screw and then we just remove this bolt. And that, as I said, that actually has a nut on the back of it. Okay. And then if we pull the cocking lever down, this should just pull off. There we go. We'll put that part of the gun aside. And there's the stock. There's not really an awful lot to it, which makes, <laughs> which is good because I'm not a woodworker. So uh, there's just this this slot. It's got to be routed out from the bottom here, and then you know the shape and the hole, the you know the hole there and the hole in the top, got to be uh, marked out. But there you go. <clears throat> right, let's get our blank of wood. Now, I have to say a big thank you here to my good friend Greg, who very kindly donated this lovely bit of mahogany uh, for the wood, for, for my new stock. So, thank you, Greg. Okay, so basically, all we're going to do now is I'm going to put this on here and allowing uh, enough room for the extra two inches I want on the uh, back end of the stock, just basically trace that out. So I've got you know plenty of uh, uh, plenty of leeway and room to cut around it. Uh, I'm hoping that there'll be enough of the wood left for me to sandwich two bits of together to make the four stock, because obviously this mahogany is going to be a very different colour to this to this original wood. So I'll get on and do that. I won't film the actual tracing around because I'm going to have to be standing right over it to trace it out. Well, I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera, but. Basically, you can see where I've traced it out. Here's where the original stock ended, and here's my extension. So I've added an extra two inches, which putting it next to the Winchester, it makes it roughly about the same length, which is what I wanted. So the next stage then is to get on and cut that out on the bandsaw. Okay, <coughs> so there is the rough sawn stock blank. Uh, I do apologise, I didn't film it. It's extremely difficult to film working on the bandsaw because you're working slow close in and I needed to be right up close to it so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't film that. But su to suffice to say that the little Burgess bandsaw did sterling, sterling service. It wasn't able to do the steep curves here and here. I had to do that in two goes. But, you know, it's only a very small bandsaw. But it did a good job. So that's the rough cut blank. You can see the difference if we sort of roughly line it up with the original. There's a good two inches on the, on the end. It's also about four mil thicker than the original, which I'm quite happy with. But what it means is I'm gonna to have to rebate in. I've got to take a couple of mil off of this part here and the same on the other side so that it will, it will fit into uh, the main part of the receiver and I think I'll do that before I attempt to do any sanding or any shaping I think I will attempt to rebate this first and I think I can do it on the mill even though my mill is the little milling machine I've got is tiny I think I can do it on that so but I'm obviously going to practice first on another bit of wood before I even attempt to do it on this so that's the next stage okay so I've got to the point now where I need to reduce the thickness of the end of, of the, my new stock here around this shaped part here so that it will fit into the receiver of the, uh, the Red Rider. 
I only need to take about 1.8 mil off of each side of this to get it down to size. Now I don't have a lot of woodworking tools, I certainly don't have a router, anything like that, but I um, have had some success using my milling machine on, on wood, particularly hardwoods in the past, and I did some test cuts on a, on a on an off-cut piece of mahogany and they came out perfectly okay using my 10 mil end mill and I think if I'm careful I can go around this and follow the shape reasonably well. Like I said I'm only taking a light cut it's only 1.8 mil so um, we'll get the depth set up and uh, we'll give it a go. Well I have to change the clamps around to allow for enough movement in the y-axis but it's still clamped pretty firmly so I'll get my safety glasses and I've set the height, so hopefully we should be good to go. Helps if you turn it on. doing quite a good job. I think that'll do the trick. I'll uh, come back when it's actually finished. Well, not bad. I mean, it's not a perfect contour, but I can I can tidy that up using a small drum sanding wheel. But uh, yeah, th this is a good finish on here for a million for a million cutter. That's pretty damn good. So all I'll do now is flip it over and do the other side, and hopefully it will be um, the right size to fit onto the receiver. Well, there's the new stock on there. Took a bit of fiddling. I had to put it back in the mill and take off another, I think it was 0.2 of a millimetre each side. I hadn't quite got it thin enough, but better to take off too little than too much, obviously. So yeah, it's not bad at all. Let's have a closer look at it. I didn't quite get the profiling right around here. There is a little bit of a gap. It's not so bad on the other side, but yeah, I'm, I'm not too bothered about that. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not a woodworker. The fact that I was able to do this freehand on the mill, any, you know, at all, to me is quite, uh, quite amazing. Now, obviously the stock's not finished. I've got to somehow find a way of rounding off the corners and then we'll all get a good sanding and we'll finish it using some finishing oil. But, you know, we are very definitely getting there. And the other thing I obviously f completely didn't, forgot about was the gun is now quite a bit heavier because this is mahogany and this is I don't know what this is but it was almost as light, light as balsa wood but it's, it doesn't weigh anything whereas this is quite heavy so yeah obviously it's shifted the balance of the gun slightly back this way yeah hopefully when I get around to making the four stock that will even up the weight distribution it's not shifted it that much that way but it has shifted a little bit it's certainly uh, done the job so Let's get on with it. Well, we've had a little bit of progress on the new stock for the Red Rider. My friend Greg, who donated this lovely piece of mahogany for my new stock, <clears throat> is a bit of a woodworker himself, and he very kindly allowed me to use his router table to round off the edges. Now, we're nearly there now with this. I, I just need to do some final sanding on it, some final cleanup work, and we'll be ready to put the finishing oil on. 
one thing I've done slightly differently to the original is I haven't rounded off these edges. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the corner of these edges. As you can see on the original Red Rider it was rounded off. I don't really like that very much. You know most butt stocks are uh, the butt plate here area is flat on those rifle stocks so I'm just going to break the corner here and leave that flat. But we're very nearly there. I've also got on to making up a piece of wood which I'm going to make the forestock from so that's that's coming along um, it's uh, mid-June 2023 here in the UK and we are currently going through a heat wave so uh, I can do a little bit of work in the morning but uh, by lunchtime I'm breaking a sweat just trying to do the crossword uh, it's just it's just too hot to do, to do anything really so yeah that's where we are now so I'm going to try and get this finally sanded down this morning ready for its first coat of finishing oil. <laughs> 